I never thought my greatest professional achievement would also be the catalyst for my most public humiliation. But standing in that gleaming conference room on the 47th floor of Quantum Dynamics headquarters, watching CEO Victor Blake's face twist with manufactured disdain, I realized that sometimes success makes you the biggest target. My name is Sarah Martinez, and until yesterday, I was the head of quantum computing research at one of the world's most prestigious tech companies. Today, I'm being called a fraud. Funny how quickly things can change. The morning had started like any other. I arrived early, as usual, my mind buzzing with the breakthrough I'd achieved just weeks ago. A quantum computing architecture that could maintain coherence a hundred times longer than any existing system. It wasn't just an incremental improvement, it was the holy grail of quantum computing, the key to making quantum computers practical for everyday use. The lobby's marble floors reflected the morning sun as I swiped my keycard, nodding to James, the security guard I greeted every morning for the past six years. Big meeting today, Dr. Martinez, he asked, noting my slightly more formal attire than usual. Just the quarterly review, I replied, smoothing my charcoal blazer. Though I do have something special to present. If only I'd noticed the subtle shift in his expression, the way his eyes darted away too quickly. But I was too preoccupied with my presentation, mentally rehearsing the technical details of my breakthrough. The elevator ride to the 47th floor gave me time to reflect on my journey here. Six years ago, Victor Blake had personally recruited me from MIT, where I was doing postdoctoral research in quantum computing. We need visionaries, he'd said during our first meeting, people who aren't afraid to think beyond conventional limitations. I believed him then. Quantum dynamics had been my dream job. Unlimited research funding, brilliant colleagues, and the chance to push the boundaries of what was possible. For five years, I'd given everything to this company, missed family events, worked weekends, poured my heart and soul into solving problems everyone else thought impossible. The quantum computing lab had become my second home, its familiar hum of equipment and the soft blue glow of monitoring screens more comfortable than my own apartment. My team, brilliant scientists and engineers I'd handpicked, had become family. The first sign that something was wrong came when I entered the conference room. Instead of the usual quarterly review crowd of department heads and technical leads, the room was packed with unfamiliar faces, men in expensive suits, members of the board I'd never met, and in the corner, Victor's new strategic advisor, James Morrison, wearing that same smug smile I'd grown to distrust over the past few months. Sarah, good of you to join us, Victor said, his voice carrying that artificial warmth I'd learned to be wary of. We've been discussing your recent claims about a breakthrough in quantum coherence. The way he said claims made my stomach turn. I set up my presentation anyway, bringing up the first slides showing the test results, the experimental data, the undeniable proof of what my team had achieved. As you can see, I began, we've managed to maintain quantum coherence for periods exceeding. That's enough. Victor cut me off, standing up. We've reviewed your work, Sarah, or should I say, we've reviewed what you claim is your work. The room temperature seemed to drop 10 degrees. I stood frozen as Victor walked around the table, each step deliberate, theatrical. Did you really think we wouldn't find out? He continued, his voice dripping with false disappointment. That we wouldn't discover your elaborate fraud. Fraud? I managed to say, my voice steady despite the pounding in my chest. What are you talking about? Victor pressed a button, and new slides appeared on the screen, slides I'd never seen before. Dr. Data, manipulated test results all made to look like I'd fabricated my breakthrough. We've discovered that you've been falsifying research data for months, Victor announced to the room, manipulating test results to support your impossible claims. Worse, you've been attempting to file patents under your own name for technology developed with company resources. The blood drained from my face as I realized what was happening. They were trying to steal my work, discredit me before I could establish my ownership of the breakthrough. My mind raced back to three weeks ago, when I caught James Morrison lurking in my lab after hours. He claimed he was just familiarizing himself with our research facilities. That's not true, I said, my voice stronger now, anger replacing shock. Every result has been independently verified by my team. Dr. Chen can confirm. Dr. Chen was relocated to our Singapore facility last week, Victor said smoothly, 
In fact, most of your team has been reassigned. They've all signed statements confirming their concerns about your research practices. My head spun. My entire team scattered across the globe. How long have they been planning this? As of this moment, Victor continued, clearly enjoying his performance, you are terminated from quantum dynamics. Security will escort you to clear your desk. Any attempt to dispute these findings or make claims about your alleged breakthrough will result in immediate legal action. The room sat in stunned silence. Board members avoided my gaze. Papers shuffled uncomfortably. James Morrison's smirk had grown wider. But something strange happened in that moment. Instead of the panic they expected, a sense of calm washed over me. Because in their eagerness to steal my work, they'd made one crucial mistake. They didn't know about the precautions I'd taken, the real patent applications, the encrypted data stored on secure servers they couldn't access. They thought they were watching me break. Instead, they were watching me realize exactly how to make them pay for their betrayal. Of course, I said quietly, gathering my things. I understand completely. Victor's triumphant expression flickered slightly, thrown off by my calm demeanor. As security approached to escort me out, I paused at the door and turned back to the room. Just one thing, Victor. You might want to check the patent office records tomorrow morning. And maybe have your lawyers review the company's position in the quantum competing market. Things could get interesting. The last thing I saw before the doors closed was Victor's confident smile beginning to crack. In the elevator down, flanked by two security guards, I allowed myself a small smile. They thought they'd stripped everything from me, my job, my reputation, my life's work. But in trying to steal my breakthrough, they'd actually given me something invaluable. The perfect opportunity for justice. Because what Victor Blake didn't know, what none of them knew, was that I'd seen this coming months ago, and I prepared accordingly. By tomorrow morning, they'd understand exactly what they'd done. And more importantly, what I was about to do. But that would have to wait. For now, I had a desk to clear, a plan to set in motion, and a very interesting phone call to make to the patent office. Sometimes, the best revenge isn't about fighting back immediately. Sometimes, it's about waiting for exactly the right moment to reveal the truth. And as I walked out of Quantum Dynamics' gleaming headquarters for the last time, I knew that moment was coming sooner than they could possibly imagine. The next morning, I sat in my home office, surrounded by three monitors displaying everything from patent office records to Quantum Dynamics' stock price. My phone hadn't stopped buzzing since 5 a.m., reporters, tech bloggers, industry analysts, all wanting to know about the mysterious new quantum competing patent that had just been made public, a patent that wasn't in Quantum Dynamics' name. I smiled, remembering the conversation I had six months ago with my old mentor from MIT, Dr. Alexandra Chen, no relation to my former team member. Sarah, she'd said, in this industry, brilliance isn't enough. You need to protect yourself. She'd been right. That's why I'd filed the patent applications through a separate company I'd established long before the breakthrough, Martinez Quantum Solutions. The applications had been timed to remain sealed until exactly one day after the quarterly review. My phone buzzed again. This time, it was Maria Torres from the Wall Street Journal. Dr. Martinez, she began, I'm looking at a patent filing that seems to describe a revolutionary quantum competing architecture. One that could maintain quantum coherence for periods previously thought impossible. But it's not filed under quantum dynamics. That's correct, I replied calmly. The technology was developed independently through my own research company. But weren't you working for Quantum Dynamics until yesterday? I was. But my contract explicitly allowed for independent research and patent filings as long as they didn't use company resources, something Mr. Blake seemed to have forgotten when he accused me of fraud. There was a pause as Maria processed this. We're also seeing unusual movement in Quantum Dynamics stock. They're about to announce a major quantum competing initiative. Are they? I said innocently. That's interesting, considering the core technology they plan to use is now patented by someone else. By 10 a.m., the story had exploded. Quantum Dynamics stock had dropped 15% in the first hour of trading. Their much-hyped quantum competing announcement, planned for later that week, was now in shambles. The technology they tried to steal from me was worthless to them without the patent rights. My secure email page, a message from Dr. Chen in Singapore. They threatened our whole team, she wrote, said they'd destroy our careers if we didn't sign those statements. 
but I kept copies of all the original research data, proving it was your work. Where should I send it? I'd already prepared for this. Send it to the encrypted server, I replied, and check your email in an hour. You might find some interesting job opportunities, because that was the other part of my plan. While Victor had been busy trying to discredit me, I'd been in talks with Aurora Tech, Quantum Dynamics' biggest competitor. They'd been following my research for years, and they understood exactly what my breakthrough meant. My phone rang again. Victor's name flashed on the screen. I let it go to voicemail, then played it on speaker. Sarah, his voice had lost all its previous condescension, replaced by barely controlled panic. There seems to have been a misunderstanding. We should talk. The board is willing to reconsider yesterday's events. Three more voicemails followed, each more desperate than the last. The final one came from James Morrison himself. You don't understand what you're doing, he hissed. You're destroying billions in market value. We can make this right. Name your price. I thought about responding, but decided to let them sweat instead. Besides, I had a more important meeting to prepare for. At 2 p.m., I walked into Aurora Tech's headquarters, where their entire board was waiting. The meeting lasted exactly 47 minutes. When I emerged, I had a new position as their chief quantum officer, complete control over my research, and a compensation package that made my quantum dynamics salary look like pocket change. More importantly, I had the resources to bring my scattered team back together. By the end of the day, Aurora had extended offers to every researcher Victor had tried to silence. The next morning, I arrived at my new office to find an urgent message from my lawyer. Quantum Dynamics was threatening to sue, claiming ownership of my research. Let them, I replied. I have something they don't. The patent? he asked. No, I said, opening my laptop. The truth. Because while Victor and James had been busy fabricating evidence against me, I'd been documenting everything. Every late-night lab entry by Morrison, every forced reassignment of my team members, every manipulated data point they created to discredit me. Dr. Chen's save data was just the beginning. I'd also kept recordings of every key meeting, backed up every research log, and maintained an encrypted chain of evidence showing exactly how my breakthrough had been developed all independently of quantum dynamics resources. But my favorite piece of evidence came from an unexpected source. James, the security guard who'd watched me arrive every morning for six years, had been troubled by what he'd overheard. He kept his own log of Morrison's after-hours activities, including the night he caught him attempting to access my locked research files. By the end of the week, quantum dynamics stock had fallen 40%. Their quantum competing initiative was dead in the water. The board called an emergency meeting and by Monday morning both Victor Blake and James Morrison had resigned to pursue other opportunities. The tech press had a field day. Quantum Competing Breakthrough Exposes Corporate Espionage Read One Headline Innovation and Integrity The Martinez Method Declared Another But the real victory came three months later when we unveiled Aurora's first prototype quantum computer using my architecture. The demonstration was flawless. Quantum coherence maintained for unprecedented periods, computational problems solved that would have taken classical computers millennia. Victor Blake was in the audience. I made sure he received an invitation. He left halfway through, just as I was explaining how my worthless research had changed the future of computing. Dr. Alexandra Chen attended too, beaming like a proud parent. After the presentation, she hugged me tightly. You didn't just protect yourself, she said. You protected the integrity of scientific research itself. That's worth more than any patent. She was right, of course. In the year that followed, our quantum computing platform became the industry standard. Researchers who had once feared corporate theft began publishing their work more openly, knowing that the Martinez case, as it became known, had set a powerful precedent. My team flourished at Aurora, free to pursue their ideas without fear or interference. Dr. Chen became our head of research operations, and that security guard, James, he now runs our entire corporate security division, implementing protocols to protect other innovators from what I went through. As for quantum dynamics, they eventually recovered, though they never regained their position in quantum computing. Sometimes I drive past their building on my way to work, its gleaming windows reflecting the morning sun just as they did that fateful day. But I don't feel anger anymore. Instead, I feel gratitude. Their betrayal taught me something invaluable. 
True innovation isn't just about scientific breakthroughs. It's about having the foresight to protect those breakthroughs and the courage to stand up for what's right. Last week, I gave a keynote speech at MIT's graduation ceremony. Looking out at those bright young faces, I shared the real lesson of my story. In science, as in life, it's not enough to be brilliant. You must also be wise. Document everything. Trust your instincts. And remember, sometimes the best response to those who try to diminish you is to rise so high they can't reach you anymore. The applause was thunderous, but I wasn't listening for it. I was watching the faces of the young researchers in the front row, seeing the same passion for discovery that had driven me all those years ago. They would face their own challenges, their own Victor Blakes and James Morrisons. But thanks to what happened at Quantum Dynamics, they would be better prepared. They would know that in the end, truth doesn't just prevail, it transforms entire industries. As I drive home each evening now, passing the quantum competing lab where my team works late into the night, I often think about that morning when Victor tried to destroy everything I built. He thought he was ending my career. Instead, he gave me the push I needed to change the world. Sometimes the greatest victories come not from fighting back, but from moving forward with such purpose and integrity that your success becomes your revenge. And sometimes the best way to prove someone wrong is to prove yourself right in ways they never imagined possible. That's not just a lesson in quantum competing. That's a lesson in life.